What's up guys, it's Mac, and today I'm going to compare the Rogue Belt Squat Belt with the Spud Inc. Belt Squat Belt. I'm going to tell you guys which one almost snapped on me while I was doing some heavy-ish belt squat walks, and which one I use the most, which one I like the most, which one's good for smaller people, and all of the above. Let's get to this and test these out. <laughs> Alright, so... Start warming up with the Spud Ink belt. Let's see, because it's short and on the bottom pan, I have to kind of kneel down to get here. And then you have the switch pins, get this adjusted, and then you can stand up and do the box. So, if this was able to adjust, that would make that a lot easier. Or, if the smaller person that got on here before me put it on the top pin, or I normally have it, then that would work a lot easier too. So, we're gonna go ahead and add some weight. See, now that so now that the pin is on the top, this is a lot easier to put on. See, I can just walk with it like that. Woo. All right, let's add some more weight. get a little heavy you can really feel the belt kind of pull in not bad it doesn't hurt but I am used to it a bit more than some people so some people kind of say the belt hurts a little bit um, you get used to it the more you do it and the heavier the heavier you can go, the lighter, the lighter weight feels. All right, guys. So we have 405. I'm gonna switch over to the rogue belt, and then I'll go, I'll go back on this one and compare them, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a bit. But so this one has all these adjustable straps. I mean, uh, loops. So you can set this wherever you want it, right? So if I want to work, especially like top in, I can set this really, really low. Or if I'm very, very short, you can hook it up here. That way you don't have to walk all the way up or all the way back to get this cord to pull the weight up so you can unhook it. So if you're a short lifter, um, having on the short setting is Rope very belt. good. So as you can see, she just leans forward a little bit and she can go ahead and pull this off the hook. That's because all those links allow you to change the height for each lifter or each athlete that's on here. So the higher that is, the less you have to walk forward or backward in order to pull that off the clip, um, which is great because if you got people with different heights, it works perfect. So like there, I can put it on the bottom too. It lengthens this. And then you just walk with it. This one, it does have a little bit more padding than the sweat one. You can kind of feel it right now. It's comfortable. So with this much weight, I can, what it feels like is that this is really, really pulling and the belt's not really holding, uh, holding on too strong. But let's add some more weight.
Okay, so with this, I can feel how thin this strap is, kind of like grinding on the inside of my thighs. If you are a female and you put on short shorts, you're gonna get some, your, your inside of the thighs is gonna get marked up pretty bad. stretching that belt out there's no tears on it but it, you can really feel this stretch out all right so we got 585 uh, I'm gonna adjust this one so I'm gonna go up one because it felt like it was really pulling and really stretching and that makes it very hard to rack the pin um, Let's see how this feels. You can feel this thing stretch horribly. So last week or two weeks ago, I was doing this. Um, usually we'll go like one minute, we'll go three minutes, five minutes. But I could hear some kind of tearing in the belt. And I was like, oh no, it's gonna rip, it's gonna break. And so I freaked out and I ordered another piece that goes to a belt. So you can see how, how hard it was just to unrack the weight with this belt, which is, if this isn't strong enough and this rips, oh man, good luck. Let's do that, let's go. All right guys, so this is 635 pounds we got on here. We're just gonna do some walks, kind of, uh, I really want to see if I can break this belt because I heard it tearing um, like two weeks ago when I was using it and it scared, like I, I freaked out because I was like, oh man, if this thing snaps and I don't wrap it, this is going to crash down. It's going to be loud. Hopefully I don't get stuck or something happened to me. So I was kind of freaking out a bit and I said I would never use a rope belt again. Um, for the small, like shorter people, I think it's perfect if you're like not doing anything heavy, but my buddy told me that he uses this belt and he goes 600. I don't believe him. He said he walks with 600 or squats with 600. I don't believe it because this thing is ridiculously hard. Even on rack, it feels, look, I'll, I'll show you guys right here. So we're going to go to the second pin right here. Right. Just slide this. I see like I stand up and you can you see that on the camera? You can see this stretch out. Can you hear that? There, you heard that? Oh, damn. Yep, yeah. I'm not doing that.
You guys hear that noise though? That was the belt. It was on the left side. Yeah, so I will not use this belt because, wow, wow. All right, I had to go back just to make sure it wasn't my like pants or anything that ripped and it was something inside the belt. I don't know how they have the stitching on this. Um, I kind of want to push it a little bit and see like, hey, how much is it going to take for this to rip? You know, just from walking, doing like some baby steps like that. <clears throat> but I don't want to break it because I, like, I, I like it for my little one, you know? I like it for the kids. But I don't know if I'll use that again. Hmm. And so this is only 635 pounds, right? It's not that heavy, you know? If you're thinking, oh, Mac, why are you walking with that weight? You don't need to walk with that weight. You're never gonna walk out with that weight. Um, I squat out of a monolift, so I don't step back, you know? Like if you're squatting at a meet that didn't have a monolift. Um, so one thing that heavy belt squat walks like this, even just going a few steps back, a few steps forward, is to help build that muscle for when you unrack the squat bar and step back. That way, if you do a powerlifting competition, you're ready. Because if you go from monolith to just walking weight out, there's a big difference, okay? Um, I use this a lot for boxing and MMA, combatives, um, jiu-jitsu, all those sports that I do, because I need to have strong legs and I don't wanna risk hurting my back doing any kind of exercise. But I do play around a lot, so I do a lot of uh, different kinds of carries, uh, safety squat bar walks, I do a bunch of stuff. But for like the, like the guys that come train with me and stuff, we'll use this thing all day. All right, so now I'm gonna switch back to the sputting belt. This is the one that I use regularly because I like the way it feels. It doesn't quite have the same padding as the Rogue one, but I don't have to worry about, hey, this belt might snap on me. What's gonna happen? Am I gonna get jerked one way or the other? Am I gonna fall? So I know I'm safe with this belt, which is something you really wanna take into consideration if you're buying a belt swap belt, is safety, because it could be you, it could be your wife, <clears throat> it could be your kids, it could be, you know, Maybe you're starting a performance gym out of your garage to kind of save up for some equipment and a lease. So safety is always like a big factor for me. That's why I love the sputting belt. And I'm like not sponsored by sputting or anything. Uh, I got a really good deal on eBay for like a whole box load of sputting straps. Um, and Mark and them, are, they're really cool people at Spud Inc. Uh, I've been to Road. They got some really cool people there too. Um, well, let me show you guys the difference. So you guys saw when I hooked that up, how hard it was just to stand up. Not because of the weight, because that kind of feels like it's stretching. It's really weird, really, really weird. <clears throat> All right, so let's see if this one stretches too. I should make a viewer here. messed me up the bottom pin I only put like one pin on at a time so that doesn't happen so but you guys can see like this this belt did not give it didn't stretch it's actually not bad like it doesn't hurt
the winner of the best belt squat belt goes to Spudink. Oh man, I can't believe I almost died. <laughs> I can't believe this thing almost ripped. I mean, it feels flimsy. It feels like something you get at Walmart, you know? Oh. All right, guys, so the road belt, right? This one did not last very well. I'm looking for some tears in it. Uh, I haven't found any yet, but I haven't looked too hard either. So I want to find where that noise came from because <clears throat> you see a bunch of the stitching right here kind of let me zoom in kind of come out a little bit and then this piece kind of stretched a little bit more but I mean it's, it doesn't look like it's torn you know it doesn't look like it ripped so I don't know what that sound was but man that was scary if uh, anyone's got this belt let me know in the comments how heavy you've gone I'll uh because I can always throw on some more weight, kind of walk around with it when I haven't just finished working out. <laughs> um, I want to know what this thing holds. Like this, I want to know that like, I can walk with this and it's not just going to snap off completely, you know? Because um, it's never been wet, it's never been like misused or anything, so it should be perfect. I just don't know what that sound was. It's really scary. <clears throat> now this belt, this pudding belt, you know, I've had it for a while, quite a while. I uh, also got um, some other belts from another company over there, um, the yellow and green. And this one, like, yeah, there's no way this thing's ripping. It doesn't feel the most comfortable, like when I put it on right here, uh, we're gonna have to look at that. So you kind of, if it's not lined up perfectly, the edges will kind of, you kind of feel that edge. You do feel it a little bit on the hips because of how like narrow this gets in here, but I would rather feel that than, you know, hear the sound of the belt ripping while all that weight is floating on your hips like I just I can't believe that happened one of the comments that came in a couple times was how to position the belt right so when you put the belt squat belt on you want to kind of put it I like to put mine a little bit high I'll show you guys from the back of you so I kind of put it a little high right there and then get it strapped in so I like mine to be like where the underwear line is to like low back. So that when I push up, hips are coming forward. So <clears throat> if you put the belt on and you start like way up here, because some people do that, and then you just press the belt down so you can kind of get in your groove, kind of play with it a little bit before you stand up with it that works too that's probably the best way I've been able to get people comfortable with the belt um, but yeah if you guys got any other questions drop them in the comments um, I'm gonna show you guys that video the other video I'll post that up tonight and uh, don't forget like the video subscribe to the channel and stay strong